Matt Johnson here at The Bite. You know, we've had a massive heat wave here in the Midwest. It's been in the 90s almost every single day. In fact, it's hit 100. We're setting records here in Minnesota and Wisconsin. This month, we're gonna send two crazes after you. The one and only Pete Mayna is gonna be in his element trying to catch a muskie, and joining him is Josh Teagan. They're gonna be chasing muskies in Wisconsin, try to beat the heat, put a big fish in the boat, but I tell you what, you're gonna have a lot of fun and listen to some of these stories that these guys tell while they chase the fish of 10,000 casts with the bite of chasing muskies. Early season muskies. The Wisconsin muskie season has been open now for a couple weeks. Looking to do the third episode of The Bite here. I'm Pete Mayna, by the way, fishing out of Hayward, Wisconsin. I'm gonna be heading up to meet with a good friend, buddy of mine, Josh Tigan, young guy that loves to fish muskie. So we're gonna pound on him here. We got lots of daylight. We got abnormally high temperatures. We're not really happy about it. It's probably gonna be a little tough. But that's musky fishing, and we're gonna get at them. Ain't gonna hurt you. Oh, boy. Normally it's a big rush. They'd come just flying out of there. You'll get over it, girls. Come on. What is it about muskies that drives you nuts? Uh, that gets you going? Uh, first of all, they still scare me as far as get me going. Uh, but that's probably because they suck overall. I coined that phrase quite a few years ago, and they very seldom show up. Um, the biggest thing is just how elusive they are, you know. Um, it's a fish you're not always guaranteed you're going to go out and catch. You know, with everything else, it's, you know, the pattern's pretty typical. I mean, you can always go out and catch a few fish, with, but with muskies, you never know. But they're big and fast and they show up when you least expect them. You know, you're going out there for the biggest fish in the lake, um, just hoping to, you know, get one or two a day. You know, a lot of days you go two, three days, you don't even see them. Um, and then you'll have days where you just light them up and you'll catch five, six in a day. And it's just, just going after them and uh, not knowing what to expect. I mean, that's my favorite part. Okay, we are at the boat landing, and Josh is here, ready to musky fish. Here he is. Hey, hey, yeah, we're gonna head out and do some musky fishing. Um, it's hot, you know, it might be 90 degrees today, not ideal musky conditions for this early in the year, but hey, we're gonna see what happens. I was out a couple weeks ago, um, fish were shallow. It's been a post-spawn bite, you know, with the early spring, and fish are starting to move into the, you know, a little deeper weed line, so we'll target a lot of different depths, and. See if we can make it happen. <laughs> the important thing is try a bunch of different things and hope the clouds yes. stay up there. Please. We need them. We need you. What are we starting fishing, Pete? Uh, weed structure, mainly, we're gonna be looking at. Uh, fish should still be high in the water column, I think, anywhere. We may end up poking around if nothing else works, uh, out in open water as well. Generally, they're in the upper part of the water column out there as well this time of the year. So overall, shallower presentations. And Josh and I will definitely start with something different it lo looks like he's uh going bucktail here right now which is always a good thing to do in the front of the boat faster moving bait search bait so based on that i'm probably going to start out with something more erratic uh crankbait or jerkbait and we'll see see what the fish tell us How did you get into musky fishing? I grew up on a fishing resort uh, from the time I was six months old. 
frankly, I guess the rest is probably genetics. Uh, wired that way. I, I've, all, I've got a couple of other brothers. They both love fishing and hunting, but I was by far the most addicted. My dad musky fished a lot, um, so growing up, that's basically all I fished for. Um, I caught my first musky when I was seven, uh, actually on a Suic. I remember it coming up and T-boning it. And my dad as well uh, was a real influence, he, the same way. I guess in a way, he never really got into musky specifically as hard as I did, but multi-species angler, uh, always loved it himself and, and, and good at it. Uh, did, did a fair amount of guiding at the resort. He was, he was definitely a big influence on me, but the rest is just, yeah, it's, it's genetics, it's addiction, it's desire. Up until I was about 15, 16 years old, that's actually all I fished for because my dad, that's basically all he fished for and I learned that from, from him. So um, once I started guiding, then I kind of got away from it a little bit. So when I do have time to musky fish again, I absolutely love it. But uh, yeah, growing up, that's all I did. Certain people are just wired for it and I'm one of them. So we just got done fishing our shallow stretch. Nothing, didn't see anything. So now we're moving into some deeper weeds here. Um, we're coming up on the major, which the major is you know moon overhead or moon underfoot. A lot of times with musky fishing, that'll that'll fire the fish up. So we're gonna hit a big stretch. This stretch out here, you can catch them pretty much anywhere. We know there's a lot of fish through here, so we're hoping this major is gonna fire them up. Um, we're gonna throw some different baits. I'm gonna throw a bucktail. Pete's gonna mix up a little bit with uh, some twitch baits and stuff like that, and just see if we can you know get one fired up and hopefully catch one. But it's been pretty slow. I mean, that's musky fish, and you're just hoping for that window to open up where you can see some fish or hopefully at least catch one or two. Yeah, yeah one follow. I actually had about a 28, and I when he turned finally, I wasn't sure if it was a pike or musky, but it was a small musky. Was it? Well, I just raised technically our first muskie. It was actually down low and slow, uh, but I did for sure identify it. It was about a 30 inch fish, definitely a muskie. So there's a possibility being that we haven't seen anything so far. Hopefully that could be the start of a little window here. Uh, the words of wisdom right now are mainly escaping me. Uh, we're we're having a tough time here. We are in the major and uh, one one follow and uh, just saw one fish swimming around. So all we can do is keep pounding really, keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we're trying a lot of different things, washing a bunch of different baits. And that's really all we can do. Sooner or later, the only good news about horrible fishing and horrible conditions is usually if you stick it out somewhere along the line there's going to be a window open up that's probably what we're relying on mainly or maybe we dig around in the box and find that one lure they're in the mood for That was uh, really exciting. A follow with the weed. See, what you gotta have is the right presentation, jerk bait with a shiny tail in the sun, and about, well, 14 inches of cabbage on the hook. And then you get a nice, exciting follow. Interesting pattern. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to duplicate. <coughs> I had them, uh, yeah, talk about the luck of this. It was the second. There's one. Yep. Stay deep. Yeah, real deep, lazy follow. Well, we had one follow the bucktail finally. Um, came in low and slow. Um, didn't go into the eight. I went on around the first turn. He looked at it, but just swam right back down. But still a good sign, I guess. I mean, for today, that's a second follow now we've had. In, I don't know, probably last hour. So. Things are looking up, now we just need them to start eating. Back in, uh, what's that lake? Oh, here we go. Dang it. Won't even go into the eight. How big was that one? 32, 33, another little one. Wouldn't eat. 
What are you doing wrong? Apparently I'm doing a lot wrong. Can't get them to eat. I uh, just had uh, another follow on the bucktail, which is good, but another slow and lazy. Tried to do a deep figure eight. Didn't want anything to do with it. Not a huge fish, like a low 30, but uh, at least we're seeing some fish now. I mean, heck, the first four or five hours we uh, we didn't even have a follow, so uh, it's nice to, nice to see a few, but hopefully they get bigger and hopefully they start biting. So what we're experiencing today is actually what, what Josh and I expected and something that doesn't get talked about all that much. People very seldom or often talk about cold fronts and the negative effects of cold fronts and essentially to me why those are bad is you've got a big disparity between the air temperature and the water temperature. Well the same is true when you have extremely high heat. Any, anything that's abnormal to what's normally going on that time of the year, if it's drastic, it's generally bad. It puts, puts fish in a bad mood. And uh, we're in a situation here where literally uh, just a few days ago water temperatures were in the, uh, in the mid 60s and now they're rocketing up with this 80, 90 degree weather. It's real hot, stagnant, and it's just generally tough. Doesn't mean there's not going to be a bite during the day, but uh, to me, this time of the year, I would actually rather have a cold front as compared to abnormally high heat and we're dealing with here. And unfortunately, as expected, it's, it's been tough, but we're gonna keep at it here. Somebody said we're gonna get a 43, so. How would you grade the bite today? Eight and a half. One to ten. Uh, one to ten, we're we're about a point five uh, activity level. To be perfectly honest, uh, we had a the most active fish. I would say rated maybe a four on a one to ten scale as far as activity. He actually swung his head a few times, but it's been very seriously real tough. And uh, to a certain extent, as I talked about earlier, expected when it's this warm. Everything's heating up, but you never know. Ooh, that was a fish, but it's, it's a little it's staying down in the weeds. It's gotta be a pike. I thought, I thought I saw it. It might be a little bit bigger than what we've been dealing with, but oh yeah, decent pike. Yeah. Yeah, might as well. It's funny how we could tell it was a pike with all those they go right in the weeds. Just amazing. <laughs> yeah, you buried in there good. That actually at least is a good sign. Yeah. Bigger pike don't bother me too much. Maybe it means the muskies might be waking up. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a decent pike. Appreciate it. After not much is going on today. That was very exciting. I think he's gonna be alright too. How are you feeling, Pete? Tired. Uh, essentially defeated. Uh, there was a wise man several decades ago who came up with the phrase, muskies suck. I'm starting to think he actually knew what he was talking about. Tough day today. <laughs> we really, really never came close to get one to hit to be perfectly honest and didn't see many fish did not see anything in the last three four hours uh, other than the northern pike I caught so it's a tough one this is uh, you know kind of humbles you for some reason though Josh and I keep doing it I don't know keeps you back coming to musky fishing after you get beat up forever what like what keeps you doing it what keeps me doing it is is actually just the the challenge of it I, I think that's that's the way you're wired to you know to a certain extent I think some individuals the uh, the more they get kicked in the teeth they, the more they kind of want to get one and get a big one and, and I think I've got that problem 
you just get you know so few chances and uh, those days when you do get a chance or two and, and you blow it or you mess something up and it's just so frustrating you know you work all that time just to get that one bite and, and you end up dumping it or botching the net job or just doing something stupid it's uh it's so frustrating but when you finally do make it happen you put one in the net it's just so rewarding in reality that's it it's, it's just the way you're wired and uh and you you know you really want to get them and and you know adversity makes you keep keep after them and and it is rewarding when it happens it, I really got to say that when you, you finally do get a good one after you've had a tough stretch, it is a little more rewarding than, you know, those, <laughs> those great days when the weather's moving, you're getting a lot of fish. You don't quite appreciate the fish on those days as much as you do when you finally nail one after you've really had to work for it. I mean, you're always trying to catch your biggest and uh, you know they're out there, um, just trying to break your PB and uh, having cool new experiences. Uh, you never know what can happen with muskies. They, uh, they always surprise you. Today is not optimal weather-wise either, but basically we've switched lakes to a lake that's traditionally a little bit better uh, in the month of June. Just, just hoping to find, you know, different bodies of water, even though they're similar at times, can have fish in different moods. So because Josh and I really haven't had a lot of musky time, we really don't know patterns. So what we're hoping to do today is find a lake where maybe the fish are just turned on in a little different mood. That's gonna be the main goal. If we do not do real well, we'll probably hop to another lake. Uh, after we're definitely gonna stay out here till the major on this lake, see what happens, and then we'll reevaluate from there. Yeah, it's been kind of a tough day, and we're starting to talk about superstitions. And you know, I'm not, I'm not a superstition guy, but Pete can be at times. But uh, I'm not that way. It's, you know, a lot of people don't like having bananas in the boat. Well, once in a while, I'll sneak one in, and once we bag a couple fish, I'll bring it out just to, just to show people that's not. Uh, not a thing, but hey, everyone's got their own deal. One time my mom uh, came musky fishing with me, you know, she just likes to sit in the boat, read a book and whatever, and so she opened up the cooler and pulls out a banana and starts eating it, and I actually, while she's eating it, I catch a 50 inch or so. That kind of proved it for me that uh, bananas are okay. <laughs> He's talking about these superstitions and bananas and how he caught a 50 incher with a banana in his boat and we're having a tough day. So Josh, where the heck are the bananas? Why didn't you bring one? You got a secret one you're saving for the major? No, no, see, he doesn't want us to catch a muskie today. He didn't bring a banana. Wants to do things the hard way. What's your superstition, Pete? Oh, I get uh, little weird things. Uh, hats. Sometimes I, I honestly get to the point of a lucky hat that just seems to work. You change the hat, you don't catch fish, you go back to the same hat, you start catching muskies again, so. So speaking of hats, if you're superstitious about hats, why'd you keep the same hat on? <laughs> Yesterday wasn't very good. I hate that, <laughs> dude. That's exactly what I thought of when you brought up superstitions. I thought, why am I wearing the same hat? I, you know what, there's got to be another hat in here. I'm going to have to get a different hat. We uh, just took a shot at open water suspended muskies. Did not see any. Uh, we're going to head back to structure right now. With regard to superstitions, Josh feels like these chips are going to help him. So if we see a fish right away, I'm going to have to start scarfing some barbecue chips. <laughs> Look at that. Hmm. <laughs> uh, about a 35 incher came in, low and slow looking, definitely following, but he gave me, which is kind of interesting, something you see a lot of times when it's hot and calm like this. He had the interest and then they 
they, I call it yawning. He just opened his mouth, saw all the white, and then he kind of paddled away. So a little negative yet, but at least we raised one. Right, right off a structure again. So the weird thing is we're not seeing many fish, but they're kind of coming from normal spots. So I think we're doing the right thing. <coughs> Oh, it was a pike, but pisses me off anyway. Yeah, any bite. You, <laughs> Dang it. You don't want to miss a bite. He smoked it, too. It was probably a 32, 33 inch pike. Um, we're definitely having some activity now. We got the major right now, and uh, Pete had a couple walleyes follow. I had a couple nice pike hit. I lost a nice one and caught a decent one, I don't know, around 30 inches or so. And then I actually just had a gar follow, which is kind of weird. Um, so everything's starting to move except the muskies. So hopefully they're next. There's one. Muskie. Come on, buddy, come back. No, he was probably 10 feet behind the bait. Uh, <sighs> Another one. That was a pretty nice one too. Yeah. It was definitely over 40. I don't. I do in my boat, but I don't obviously don't have it with me. Oh, oh boy, nice fish. Was he pretty hot when he come in? Yeah, right, but he saw the boat and he backed off, but yeah, he was coming in hot. He sounded a little more excited. Yeah, I even, even kneeled on my knee. That's how much I know. I was excited on that one. Well, this is probably update, what, 499? Um, is it any better than any of the others? Not really, not really. I mean, we're seeing a lot of fish. Um, they're just not biting. I mean, we've been at it a long time and we have not had one muskie actually bite a lure. So it's frustrating, but you know, you can't catch them on the couch and that's the thing with muskie fish. You're just waiting for that one bite to make it all worth it. And, we're still waiting for that to happen. Sooner or later, it has to happen. Now, when you're out there suffering, it doesn't feel like you should really ever do it again. The smart thing to do would be to never ever do it again because it's silly, it's stupid. There's just not enough reward for the effort, it seems like. However, then one scares you and you have to keep doing it. Got one, got one, got one. Nice fish, nice fish, nice fish, right here. Right here. Oh boy, oh boy. Juice, let's go. Nice net job, Pete. That was quick. Awesome. Uh, somebody said there was going to be a 45 incher caught. And we're not gonna measure this fish because the water's real warm. We don't wanna do extra things. But Josh and I, I, it's within an inch, no doubt. Actually, it's the camera guy that said something about that. So are people allowed to know who you are, Adam? Yeah, they can know. Okay, well Adam said a 45 inch, and that's what Josh just caught. So you nailed it, man. That's a nice yeah, fish, that's Josh. a big fish, Pete. Very nice. Really built well, just yeah. really a beauty. Yeah, for spring you wouldn't think yeah. it'd be this built yeah. this well. That's an amazing fish right there. Real thick bag. Very heavy. That's awesome, I mean, <laughs> to get a fish like that in these tougher conditions, that yep. is really cool. That's why you gut it out, no yep. doubt about it. 
one. And uh, these water temps are warm, so we're going to yep. want to get, get her, her back. back pretty quick. But that's an awesome, awesome fish yep. right there. It's a giant for northwest Wisconsin. Absolutely. Yeah, that's all a, that's all a 45. Yep. Poss possibly, if anything, it's got an inch on that. I agree. That's a... That's a big fish. I mean, that fish might go 25 pounds, I'd say. Oh, absolutely. For sure. On the weight. I mean, look how thick she is. On the weight, there's no doubt. Absolutely. No What's even better is she is okay. She's kicking good, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let her go here. There she goes. That was awesome. And then uh, I really want to talk, too, about... Uh, we talked about the warmer water temps here, and... Uh, Something that I really stress for the good of the fish is this is this clam colossus net and then, uh, the, the hoop strength and the oak and all of that are, are tremendous frankly and I really like the round design but the most important thing for the good of the fish is this mesh. It's real thick, it's knotless here, very importantly it's a tight weave and it's also coated. So what happens is you don't get near the tangling, you don't get near the fin splitting, you basically don't get any slime removal, and you can't drive hooks through this past the barb, which creates some horrible tangles. So you are automatically a better fish handler by making sure you've got a net like this with the proper mesh that's best for the fish. That was awesome. Took off. Dude. Nice spot. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That was, uh, yeah, after you work that hard, and then all of a sudden, boom, I, two casts? Three I, casts? I've, honestly, I think that was my first, first cast. I really do. Man, I like being guided. <laughs> <laughs> Competitive factor. Yep. Oh! What the that was a muskie. Are you it was like a 40. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, dead serious, dude. It was like a 40. I guarantee the GoPros caught it. That you literally cool just see. pulled it out of the water and he dolphined after it. He almost got it. Yeah. Well, now we're back to my topic. I hate it when I screw up. There, got him. I got him. Well, you don't have to get him the first time if you can get him the second time. <laughs> Holy cow, is he fighting? Nice, nice set job. Yeah. Way to go, Pete. <laughs> that was cool. So, totally being honest here, I messed that up. I would, I brought the bait in, the way the sun angle is and everything. Had no idea that fish was there. Just had it uh, come flying out of the water when I did the wrong thing and lifted the bait out. Tried to hit it. Quick pitch back. Bang. Got him to nail it. So, that's pretty cool. That was awesome. Here we go, let's have a quick look. That was a fun, fun fish. The way he came back and just nailed it. And I wanna, I wanna get him back here quick, but nice chunky one. And uh, so awesome. What a way to end it. We still got a little time here. Roll over, buddy, and get out of here. There you go, there you go. He's looking good. But uh, this is so cool to, you know, go through a tough time like we did with the hot weather and all of that and to be able to end the day with some activity. We should probably get back at it just in case. Probably. This will be episode three of the bite. It was awesome to get a muskie show done and look for more of them.